So for Fast Ethernet 02, we know we've got um, that going to a PC in the HR department. So interface Fast Ethernet 0 slash 2, jump shoot interface configuration mode. And then the command is switch port access and then whatever VLAN you are, you're uh, attached to. So VLAN and then the number in this case 3. That's really the only configuration you need for assigning it. Exit out of there. And then for VLAN 4, we'll do the same thing. In this case, for uh, Fast Ethernet 0 slash 7, switch port access VLAN 4. Um, so for verifying your VLAN configurations, um, VLAN configurations are stored in the VLAN database or the VLAN.dat on a switch and are therefore not shown in the running config. Um, again, this uh, when we talk about transparent mode later, that that's a little bit of a different situation, but for the most part, VLAN configurations are not going to be visible in the running configuration of the switch. Um, so you're going to want to use the show VLAN command to see a list of VLANs and their assigned ports. And I realize the, the text is a little bit small here, but you guys can kind of see you know, this is a uh, you know, show VLAN command. On the left here, you've got each of your individual VLANs, so VLAN 1, 3, 4, and we've got some other ones here that exceed the normal range, like 1002, 1003. Um, it's got the uh, the name of the VLAN, if it applies, and then the, the state on all these, it seems to be active. And then the, the important information you're looking for over here is on the right. It shows exactly which ports are assigned to what, so, um, you know, at Fast Ethernet 02 and 07, are assigned to 3 and 4, and everything else is still assigned to the default VLAN, which is VLAN 1. Something to note, if you're trying to find out which port a, uh, a, a, or which VLAN a particular port is assigned to, you do a show VLAN, and for whatever reason you're not seeing that uh, port listed here under any of the VLANs, it probably means that port is, assigned, is configured as a trunk port. Anything configured as a trunk port is not going to show up in the show VLAN because trunk ports inherently carry all VLANs. So it's not going to be assigned to to any specific port. Did you still see in the show run uh, for the fast Ethernet configuration you, that it's assigned to? Yes, the in, the, in the show run you still will see um, on, on the particular interface that the switch port command, but you won't see the, the VLAN commands unless it's for a transparent mode. Uh, so VLAN trunking, um, actually just briefly touched on that a second ago. So VLANs can sp span multiple switches. Um, the ports connecting switches and carrying VLAN information are called trunks. Um, and they, this is a specification, they always have to be at least 100 megabits per second, so you know, fast ethernet or gigabit uh, or higher. Um, trunks carry information for all VLANs by default, uh, but can be configured to carry only certain VLANs. Like you can, you can actually prune out um, specific VLANs if you realize there's not a reason for um, it to carry VLAN traffic there like say there there are no users on a particular VLAN on a, on a single switch hanging out by itself you can set the the trunk port not to to prune out that VLAN so that you um, you don't carry traffic for it as a frame traverses a trunk between switches a VLAN identifier is added to the frame um, and then that identifier is stripped from the frame when it's sent to uh, sent out to the access port for the, the corresponding user. And so this is kind of a um, a quick well quick little image of a, a trunk. So you've got you know two switches basically here, each with multiple devices uh, divided between VLANs one and VLANs three. You know the native VLAN and then VLAN three, um, and then you've got a trunk port running between them. You know, if you were to send a, a broadcast message from any device here on like VLAN 3, it would go to this switch, it would broadcast it out to, you know, all every port it came, every VLAN port that applies except the one that it came in on. So for, uh, say you came in off of uh, Fast Ethernet 0 slash 4, it would go out, everything assigned to that VLAN, so it would go out to F05, F02. It would also send the broadcast across this trunk line since it's assigned to every VLAN. It would arrive at this router and then it would go out all of the uh, the ports corresponding to VLAN 3. So so in this case only uh, F, uh, Fast Ethernet 0 slash 3. Uh, well, go ahead. Oh, uh, so if you don't particularly assign a Fast Ethernet port for a VLAN, if you if you do not assign a particular VLAN to an access port, it's going to be VLAN one. All everything is going to be inherently assigned to VLAN one unless you specify it as a different VLAN. Okay, so if you have eight ports and three VLANs, and you only configure ports one, two, and three for one, two, and three VLANs, the other five ports 
will all be VLAN 1. And actually, one, you said, you know, configure for VLAN 1. You can configure for VLAN 1, but it's not going to change any of the configuration since they're all, um, they're all inherently a part of VLAN no 1. Correct. Correct. In this uh, particular diagram, the connection, the trunk connection between the two switches happens to be fast beacon at, is that 0, 024? Correct. Zero twenty four on both sides, um, that just that inherently. Just by coincidence or that, that, have that, to match? No, that, they do not have to match. That's just by coincidence. I mean, it's it's probably a good idea to. I mean, it's at least not Let's a bad idea to make it uniform across. Mm -hmm. That way, you don't have to hunt down cables. Um, but yeah, it it does not have to be the same port number by any means. It does have to have. Um, well, we'll we'll talk about trunk configuration in a minute. It does have to have <laughs> more or less the same kind of configuration on each end um, to okay. some degree. That was going to be my next question: if there had to be trunk configuration for those individual packages. Yeah, there, there does. I think that's actually um, next the coming slides or whatever. And they, they don't actually have to match exactly. I'll talk about that in okay. just a second. Cool. Um, so and here we are, actually. So there there's two forms of trunking. Um, one of them is ISL trunking, and the other one is 802.1Q uh, 802 trunking, or called dot dot q dot one q trunking in a lot of cases um so isl trunking is a cisco proprietary version um isl stands for inner switch link um isl encapsulates the original frame and includes an additional 26 byte header and a four byte crc trailer um, so because of this isl frames can exceed the normal frame size limit of uh, 1518 1518 bytes um you know basically if you already have something either at or near the limit and then you add this extra 30 bytes of uh, header and CRC, you're going to go beyond that limit. Um, if an interface isn't configured properly for ISL, it will likely drop what are known as giant frames because of the MTU limitation. So if you don't, if you don't let an interface that's uh, you know a trunk interface configured correctly for ISL know that it, it is, um, it's going to basically see at least some frames, maybe not all because the original frames may not be near the limit, but some frames will uh, be seen as giants and will be dropped because they're over you know that maximum transmittable unit size so that that's ISL um, that like I said it's Cisco proprietary so I, I've kind of got a problem with most things that are, are left proprietary because in most networks these days you're not going to be limited to just Cisco equipment uh, you're, you're going to have a, a wide variety of vendors in there so 802.1q is what you're probably more likely going to be tested on especially if you had any kind of um, simulations over this particular uh, information. Um, it's also like what's just more common out in the field. So if you have to you know, really memorize one way or the other, you're, you definitely want to know dot, dot one q pretty well. Um, so more common and open standard method uh, for configuring trunks to identify VLANs is uh, 802.1q uh, developed by IEEE as an open standard. The original Ethernet frame in this case is not encapsulated as, IS, I, as ISL team tends to do, uh, but instead the, the VLAN ID is, in, is inserted into the original frame as uh, four extra bytes after the source address. So it just kind of like jams those in. Um, because of the added four bytes, the CRC on the original frame isn't going to work. It has to be recalculated. Um, so it, it adds the four bytes uh, to identify the VLAN, recalculates the CRC, and then forwards the frame out. Uh, is, it, is it changing the actual data that's in the frame then by it's, it's, dropping the four bytes? Well, it's, it's, it's jamming it in. It's not like removing a part of it. It's, it's jamming in these extra four bytes uh, right after the source address. So it's not, it's not modifying it so much as it's like adding a little tag in there kind of as extra data. Um, but since like CRC is calculated based on like the existing you know, data of the frame, including the header and everything, the CRC that was there before, even though you're only changing header information, it still has to be recalculated. It's going to come back as a bad packet. What device is doing that recalculation? The, the switch is doing it. Oh. Yeah, like on the, basically, because it's not, it's not going to add that header until it um, tries to traverse a trunk. Right. So the, the, the port on the, I guess, the near side of the trunk is going to add that uh, header, recalculate the CRC, and then send it to the other side where it will be presumably stripped off or whatever so that it goes to the, the corresponding ports. Um, when it does that though, just like in, in the last uh, situation for ISL, you've got a chance of frames being too large and you have to have a, an MTU set correctly. Frames, uh, frames for this may be set up as uh, known as baby giants because